Stay connected with us, amen. Uh, my wife tries to uh, monthly uh, post our services, uh, regardless if they're going to be in this area or out of state. And so if you just pull up, amen, you'll be able to realize that we're uh, still in Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, you pray for us. Uh, we'll leave the service this morning. And uh, Lord willing, we have a uh, service in all good Tennessee at uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon at Remnant Church. And uh, we don't know how long that service goes because you never know what the Holy Ghost is going to do. And so if it's... Uh, adequate where there's sufficient time if we get out amen we'll we'll find somebody that's having church on sunday night and we'll go tonight also but i'll tell you what you pray for us uh, this morning and this afternoon uh looking forward uh next weekend we'll be in la Folle, tennessee we'll get up about 6 30 that sunday morning be with brother steve bruce at faithway assembly of god uh look forward amen every year that we get to go to uh, that church also, we're looking forward, amen, uh, something close to home. The end of this month, my wife and I will be involved in the Friday night uh, camp meeting in Putman County. It's a Friday and a free will all day Saturday, but we're doing the Friday night service uh, there in Putman County for Brother Larry Self, amen, and so you're welcome to come. We'll be uh, doing a service that Friday night, and then they're going to have a meal, amen, after the service, and then... I don't know who all the preachers and singers are scheduled for the Saturday services, but uh, I tell you what, uh, you will be blessed, amen, to come. I look forward, amen. Uh, yeah. We're getting ready to go back into the state of Kentucky. Uh, actually, uh, in June, we're going to have a couple of services at the Campaign Church of God in the uh, month of June. And so we're just uh, thankful for the doors that God is opening to us, amen. amen. But this morning, I want you to open your Bibles, amen, to Acts chapter 4. And my wife and Nathan talked last night. Uh, I heard part of the conversation as I was moving about in the house. But two or three days ago, uh, God began to deal with me a particular thought. And I thought, well, now, Lord, are you changing for the Sunday afternoon service the uh, message? And the Lord indirectly uh, let me know, no, uh, I'm pleased with what I want you to do on the Sunday afternoon service. But he said, this is something else. And I thought, well, we're really not scheduled. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't just ignore it. I pursued it. And I said, God, you have a reason, amen. And I believe that the Lord spoke to me about some things that not only I but you are facing, even today, adversity comes. Battles come. Our faith will be put to the test. I'm like you. I don't like the storms that come my way or your way. But we need to realize that we've got to have a trust and a faith in God. That regardless of what the enemy is attempting to do, that we have to have faith in God's word that he is a God that will not only hear, but he's a God that will answer. Amen. Amen. A God that never fails. Let me read some scriptures for you this morning. Acts chapter 4. You're very familiar with these scriptures? Acts chapter 4, verse 29. And now, Lord, Behold our threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with bones. My thought that I would leave with you this morning is a message of encouragement. That God is a God that can encourage us regardless of the situations and the circumstances. I'm just like you. I don't like when trouble comes. I don't like when problems come, 
But I know that if I can keep my eyes on Christ and keep my faith in God, that God will see us through. Amen. So this morning, I want you to realize that God is our strength. He is our help in the very present time of trouble. Amen. That you and I can depend upon God. When no one else can come through, God will come through. Amen. Might not be the way that I want it or the way that you would like for it to come, but God is a God that will do and take care of his children. And a God that will protect, a God that will provide the provision that you and I, that he will supply our every need. Yes. Yes. Amen. It's already been mentioned. That the devil, he's a thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But you and I need to realize that we need to rely upon the word of God and trust God's word that God is a God that will honor every promise in the word of God. Amen. That he will not let us down. Don't let the enemy belittle you. Let me tell you something. Yes, problems and troubles and storms and battles have a tendency to affect us, but don't let it get you down. Don't let it stop you or destroy your faith in God. Yes. Yes. Because God is a God that lives inside of us, a God that walks by our side, a God that will be with us continually. Yeah. A God that we can rely upon His presence. I feel like in my spirit, man, there's some of you that are here this morning, hallelujah, that are facing some things in your family, yourself, on the job, financially, health issues, that you need to realize that God has not forgotten you. He knows where you're at and what you're facing and going through. And he's the God that's getting ready to do something about it when the doctor can't do it. The lawyer can't do it. A banker can't do it. God can do it all. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. God that can do it all. Here we see what I have read this morning. The turmoil. The enemy is fighting the church. Threatening them. Telling them you're no longer to speak or teach about this man Jesus anymore. You've got to stop it. You've got to quit. Let me tell you, you as an individual, your walk with God is very important. It's not a time to quit. It's not a time to throw in the towel. It's not a time to stop. You've got to keep pressing on because I'm telling you, the best is yet to come for the people of God, and we know it. Amen. Amen. Yes. Here, they are reproved, they're rebuked, they're put down, and they're simply told, we don't want you to speak about this man or teach about this man Jesus anymore. But we see here in verse 32, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. After they receive the message, they come back and assemble together as believers. And here is the crucial thing that we need to realize. They knew the most important thing that they could do was what? Pray. Yeah. I realize that people no longer feel like it's important to pray anymore. Oh, we still ask the blessing on the food, or we might say our bedtime prayers, but we need not neglect the importance of praying and communicating with God that God wants us to continue to pray, and this is what they did. They prayed. Yeah. And the result of their prayer was the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you just begin to imagine as they were praying? The Word of God says, what? The place was shaken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
This week in New York City, people were alarmed and frightened because all of a sudden, New York City experienced a minor earthquake. There was a lot of shaking. Amen. But I want you to realize we are living in an era that I believe that we need a move of the Holy Ghost. That we need to have the Holy Ghost to come into our church services, amen. And that there be a definite shaking by the power of God that we might realize that God is still a God that's on the move. Amen, that's right, amen. The place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. We're coming to a place that I believe that many people need to realize that we need a refilling of the Holy Ghost, amen, because it is the power of God, it is the strength of God that will sustain us when we go out and face whatever we're going to face this afternoon or tomorrow. Yeah. When you and I allow the Holy Ghost and for him to have his way and his will, amen, things will change and things will be different. Because I believe that God is wanting us to come to the place that we assemble ourselves together and pray as never before. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. My wife and I, we are evangelists. We believe in evangelism. But I want you to realize something. It's not the pastor, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher. It is God that ushers in the move of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And the one thing that I have found out from reading the word of God, that the main way to have a move of the Holy Ghost is people come and pray together until God opens the windows of heaven and there be a Holy Ghost shaken. I want you to realize, I believe the anointing of God is still real today. Yes. But many churches have turned into a social club. Mm -hmm. Entertainment. There's nothing wrong with good fellowship. But I think sometimes we are neglecting when we come to the house of God what the purpose and the reason that we're there in the church service. Mm -hmm. I realize there are people that still Praying before church services. But not like what they used to. I remember as a teenager going to the Pentecostal church there in Cumble. Oh, they had it posted on the outside of the sign, Nathan, what time the service would start. But a lot of times, amen, because those precious saints of God, especially the women, would be in the sanctuary praying and seeking the face of God. And before the service was to start, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost would move in. Hallelujah, and the service would start before the actual starting time. What am I saying this morning? God help us to open our eyes and realize that we've got to get back to the place that we pray harder than ever before. Yes. Yeah. We're winners, church. There's a battle to be fought. There's a warfare that's going on. Storms are going to come and go. Situations sometimes will be, look like they're out of hand. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. God wants you and I to realize that God is looking for people that will be committed to him. And be able to say regardless of what is happening or what might happen, I'm going to be faithful to God. Amen. Yeah. A few years ago, my wife and I were in Russell Springs, Kentucky. And we 
were there in the service and uh, Brother Wayne Keith is the pastor of Solid Rock Church there. And uh, I guess it was a revival or something, that, but we were there that, that, uh, in that service. But Brother Keith read something at the beginning of the service and uh, it touched my heart. And uh, I asked him later, I thought, is this your material? Is this something that you, you know, the Holy Ghost gave you and you just sit down and wrote it? He said, oh no. He said, I don't even know who the actual author is. And I said, is there some way that I could have a copy of that? And he said, why sure. He said, I share it with a lot of people. He quickly made me a copy of it. And me and my wife have used it on numerous occasions, but it's probably been a good year. And the Holy Ghost just reminded me of this copy that I'm gonna get ready to read to you. That I believe that it'll be instrumental It'll help you to be able to say, I'm going to be committed regardless of how good or how bad or how ugly it might happen to me. I'm going to stay committed and be a Christian Amen. and a soldier in the army of God. Listen to this. I am a soldier in the army of my God. The Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. The Holy Scripture is my code of conduct. Faith, prayer, and the word are my weapons of warfare. I have been taught by the Holy Spirit, trained by experience, tried by adversity, tested by fire. I am a volunteer in this army, and I am enlisted for eternity. I will not give out sell out, be talked out, or pushed out. I'm faithful, reliable, capable, and dependable. If my God needs me, I am there. I am a soldier. I'm not a baby. I need not be pampered, petted, primed up, pumped up, picked up, or peppered up. I'm a soldier. No one has to call me, remind me, Write me, visit me, entice me, or lure me. I am a soldier. Am I talking about some soldiers in the army of God in this service today? Hallelujah. It's time that we stay committed. He said, I am not a whip. I am in place, saluting my king, obeying his orders, praising his name, and building his kingdom. No one has to send me flowers, gifts. Food, cards, candy, or give me handouts. I do not need to be cuddled, cradled, cared for, or catered to. I am committed. I ask you a question this morning. Are you that committed to be a soldier in the army of God, regardless of how severe or how hot the battle is? God's looking for people that will be committed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn me around. I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside. I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. When Jesus called me into this army, I had nothing. If I end up with nothing, I will still come out ahead. I will win. My God has and will continue to supply all my need. I am more than a conqueror. I will always triumph. I can do all things through Christ. The devil cannot defeat me. People cannot disillusion me. Weather cannot wear me. Sickness does not silence me. Hell cannot handle me. Why? Because we are soldiers. Amen. Amen. Even death cannot destroy me for when my commander calls me from his battlefield, he will promote me to captain and then allow me to rule with him. I'm a soldier in the army and I'm marching, claiming victory. I will not give up. I will not turn around. I'm a soldier marching heaven bound. Here I stand. Will you stand with me? Amen. Yes. yes. Are we that committed? Even I ask myself the question, am I that committed to say regardless what happens, I'm 
going to stay true to God. You and I need to realize that when we put our total faith and trust in God, God will come through. Yes, amen. Yes. If you continue to read in Acts chapter 4, after they prayed, the place was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what happened? They spake the word of God with boldness. Yes. How bold are we supposed to be? Well, Proverbs 28, 1 says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. Mm -hmm. So God's looking for men and women that won't be whips. God help us. We need to realize that God has put us in the position as Christians, amen, to be his representative and we've got to live and talk and tell people about this man called Jesus. Yes. I want you to be aware you may be here today and it's been of late some of the worst times of your life. And sometimes when we think the worst is the worst, sometimes it even gets even worse. But I want you to have comfort. I want you to have joy and the peace of God and the realization that God is with us. As he was with the church there in the city of Jerusalem, he's still with his church today. Yes. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. That's right. Amen. The devil's going to fight. There's going to be a warfare. There's going to be storms. There's going to be situations and circumstances that come, but help us, oh God, that we will be standing thankful and be able to endure whatever the enemy throws at us. I don't know what all we will have to face in these last days, but I believe we're in the last days. Amen. But God has given us a promise. When maybe your husband, your wife, your children, mom, dad, family, friends, seemingly are nowhere to be found, and everybody seems to be gone, and don't have time for you and your situation. God said in his word, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you even to the end. Yes, amen. What a promise. Amen. What a promise. Yes, amen. Oh, hallelujah. To realize that God has time for his people. Yeah. And that he is not going to forsake you. Oh, amen. In closing, let me say this. It's easier said than done, I know. But we need to turn a deaf ear to what the enemy is trying to speak into our man. We need to say no to his lies, his rumors, his accusations. And begin to have an ear to hear what God has Man, to say. Yes. That's right. Musicians, would you come? There's some other things I could share with you this morning, but I believe that I've laid the foundation of this message that has built your faith. And I want you to stand all over this congregation. Musicians, you come back to the piano, guitar, drums, whatever. Every head bowed and every eye closed. We praise you and we thank you, Lord. That you're real.
The Holy Ghost is in this place this morning. Now you have sent your power, your spirit, and your word that is beginning to shake us as individuals. That you are going to strengthen us and encourage us. You're going to heal our bodies. You're going to touch our minds. Lord, those that are here that are discouraged, encourage them. Those, Lord, that seemingly are on pins and needles and they're anxious about some things, God, give them your deep inner peace in the midst of their trouble. Now do the work that only you can do. Lord, I have finished my assignment that you have assigned for me to do today. Now, Holy Ghost, this is your service. Do what needs to be done in Jesus' name. You need prayer this morning.